Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we'll be taking a look at the astrological energies from January 5th until January 12th, 2022 as we continue to move into a brand new calendar year. Now, over this next week, the energies are a bit softer and quieter, and it's a wonderful time to focus, to prioritize, to look at what you need to take care of, what you need to get organized, and even how you're ready to structure your days in a more effective manner. Capricorn season is always a perfect time for planning, for looking at what is important, what's a priority, not just in the short term, but in the long term. So this is a great week to look at what you need to take care of, perhaps in the month of January, but then also where you're going in the year ahead. Now, that might seem very obvious, and that could be how you naturally approach the beginning of a new year. But the energies right now are actually asking you to look at things in a new way, to ask some new questions, to look at what you're doing from different angles or different vantage points. And that's part of the influence right now of Mercury in Aquarius. And Mercury in Aquarius is very smart and is aware of what can be worked with. And this is very beneficial for new solutions, new ways of moving through your day and understanding what you need to do and questioning even, do I really want this to be a part of my daily routine? Is this really important at this time? So there's the potential here for asking some bigger questions that maybe you never even thought of asking, and they will lead you to new solutions or new ways of approaching your energy that's in better alignment with your priorities and what you're focusing on right now. We have the combination of three planets in Capricorn, Sun in Capricorn, Venus retrograde, and Pluto in Capricorn. Plus, we have Mercury and Saturn in Aquarius that are both leading us forward, that are asking us to think about, again, these different ways of looking at what is in front of you and really understanding what you need based on where you're going next. So these are energies that want us to open up and to sit with something even. And that's important because Mercury is now in its shadow zone where it will be until it stations retrograde on January 14th. So important to note that Mercury retrograde will begin January 14th, and there could be some issues, topics, ideas, things coming up right now that you're going to want time to contemplate and to sit with. So there could be a sense here of you have some new ideas, some new ways of considering what tasks you need to accomplish. This upcoming Mercury retrograde is very dynamic and it is asking us to break out of what we've assumed, what we've always done, and to again, challenge or look at things from a new vantage point. So we'll be talking about those energies even more next Wednesday. But just a heads up that over this next week, anything that comes up, you could be revisiting during this Mercury retrograde phase. And there's energy here that again, it's asking us to be broader in what we have previously accepted or assumed was the only way to go about something. So that mental expansion can happen over this upcoming Mercury retrograde phase, especially when Mercury is in the sign of Aquarius. And all of this will play into this week's focus on looking at what you need to take care of, what is important, what you need to get done, and also allowing things to just sit. There's an energy this week where it's okay if something isn't solved right away, if it's left open-ended, if there's no immediate response or immediate answer. The energies feel like they're allowing us to perhaps even marinate or sit in something and to not feel rushed, but more importantly, to not feel pressure. So if you can give yourself that time and space this week to not feel pressured to do everything or perhaps to expect a certain timeline, that can alleviate any stress. 
anxiety, anything that's wearing on your nervous system, just allow something to be open. Just allow it to sit in the open air. Let it breathe and also detach. And that's another theme right now with these energies is detachment, where we can step back or step away and allow something to just be what it is, to not over control it or overwork it, to just let it be and to let it unfold without applying too many expectations. And that's because not only are we moving towards this Mercury retrograde, where Mercury will interact with the Uranus-Saturn square energies. So that's going to be a very strong dynamic, where Mercury will square Uranus in Taurus, and then make a near conjunction to Saturn in Aquarius. So Mercury is going to basically be entering the conversation between Uranus and Saturn. And this is going to bring up more that we're ready to ponder, to sit with and review during the Mercury retrograde energies. But until then, This is a good time to look at where you can step back, to really honor where you don't have control over a process or something that needs to get done, and to alleviate yourself of that pressure or that burden. Because chances are, if you were trying to force something or make it work or rush it through, it's going to be reworked during the Mercury retrograde phase anyways. And it's going to look very different by the middle of February. So again, anything that you can just let it be and allow the timing to work with you, that could be something that feels better for your energy and give you a sense of, I don't have to manage this. I don't have to over manage this. I can let this be what it's going to be. And that might bring you a sense of peace as well as a wonderful opportunity to practice detachment. Now, over this next week, we're going to see Venus retrograde meet up with the sun in Capricorn at 18 degrees. And this will be an exact conjunction between Venus retrograde and the sun. This is known as a Venus star point at 18 degrees of Capricorn. And it's where the energy, consciousness, and light of the sun infuses this Venus retrograde. And so this is where that Venus energy is going to have a new awareness. And it's also a birthing energy. This is a sense of something coming to light, coming to the light of your awareness, the light of your consciousness. And it does pertain to any Venus themes or energies that you've been working through or working with. This is where you could have a bigger understanding, perhaps around a particular relationship in your life. This could be where you understand what you've been learning and what you've been mastering. Those are part of the Capricorn themes where we've had to experience certain things in order to get it. And this is where something could click and there could be a deeper understanding, especially at a heart level of what you need. And part of this energy could show you where there have been voids, voids in relationships or partnerships or friendships, where certain things haven't quite been everything you want, everything you need. And what I'm seeing around this energy, and it's really quite beautiful, is that that sun and Venus conjunction is a reprogramming in the heart. And I'm seeing it as these beautiful mosaic pieces that are being moved around. And they are different pieces of light. And they have multiple colors. And they're being stirred up, so to speak. And this is where the energy is moving around in the heart to be in better alignment and higher alignment with what you're ready to experience, create, and receive next. And this feels like it relates to love, but also the love you have for yourself and how if those energies have been growing and expanding for you, it's shifting you permanently. There's things that are happening within us where we're getting a deeper understanding of what we need, what we're worth, what we value. And there could be some really clear decisions here of what you're no longer willing to participate in, what is no longer enough for you, where you're not going back. 
That's part of this Venus retrograde theme that we've been talking about. I did a separate podcast for you specifically on the Venus retrograde and Capricorn energies because it's so intense when it's working with Pluto. That makes it much, much more significant in our soul growth and bigger, more emotional, more intense. But now as this Venus retrograde makes a conjunction to the sun, again, it's at 18 degrees of Capricorn, the sun's light and energy force infuses Venus and the sun brings in an understanding of what she needs, what she wants, and perhaps what she hasn't had or where she's been disconnected from her heart. Now, Capricorn is not particularly emotional, sentimental. This isn't where you're going to perhaps feel something emotionally, although of course you can, but this is something that's bringing in an opening to new experiences, a new sense of maturity and responsibility around love. This is where you could be understanding where you're ready to make new commitments in your life, which is the energy of Capricorn. And those commitments are made from a reasonable, realistic place. They're also made based on timing. So I feel like this particular Venus star point opens up something that you're ready to commit to. You really want now in your life that maybe you didn't want it before. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a priority. Something has shifted, something is shifting, and this energy is bringing to light what you want to make a commitment to. Now, this can be to yourself. This can be something that you're committing to around what you want to experience in relationships, where you're raising up your standards, you're requiring more from yourself. You're shifting your own vibration and frequency so that you're ready to receive or interact with people in a new way. So this can certainly change relationship dynamics, and that relates to all kinds of relationships, partnerships, friendships, especially coworkers, bosses, mentors, authority figures, parents. Capricorn is about those who are older than us, those who have more experience. Of course, this can relate to you, where you are the person who has more experience or you're the authority in some way. But there's a reprogramming in the heart of your willingness to show up, your willingness to take responsibility, your willingness to commit to something because it's where you're at now in your life. It's also something that you really want that you can't ignore. Now, this is feminine energies. And so there could be something that has also matured within your feminine self, your divine feminine self. And part of the responsibility could be acknowledging how you have participated in relationships where you're fully owning you, where you haven't been your best or highest self, where you're looking at your own patterns and habits, uh, perhaps your own wounds or your emotional process or cycles. And you're seeing it from a different vantage point. You're seeing how perhaps even certain relationship cycles and energies have created ongoing dynamics in your life. And you're ready to take responsibility for everything that is yours. And you're ready to do something in a new way and a different way. So whenever we have an exact conjunction between the sun and Venus, especially Venus retrograde, that solar energy is more powerful and it brings in higher awareness, higher consciousness. It's basically like a giant spotlight is shining on these Venus energies in yourself. And the sun is gifting you with an opportunity to see something that you didn't see before. And that is what changes or that is the turning point in yourself. And that's also where I'm seeing these mosaic pieces moving around where whatever story or version of a relationship or relationship patterns you've had, there could be something new that you're seeing as those mosaic pieces move around. Of course, this can also relate to financial matters. This can relate to anything around women or feminine energies, either in yourself and in your life. This can relate to the deeper themes of 
what you've believed you're worthy of, what you value, what you believe you can manifest or create in your life. This would be a beautiful time to set relationship intentions. Similar to a new moon, when Venus interacts directly with the sun, there is the opportunity here to set new intentions around relationships, around love, around value, worth, money, and also the Capricorn themes of your career, your purpose, your profession, what you're doing in the world, how you're showing up, how you're ready to take responsibility perhaps for something in a new way. There is the element here of maturity and understanding what matters for the long term. So looking at where you want your life to be in five years or 10 years is part of the Capricorn energies. So there's a seriousness here as well. There's a sense of we only have so much time on the planet. And it reminds me of that beautiful quote by Mary Oliver, the poet and author who asked, what do you want to do with your one wild and precious life. And when you put something into that perspective, it could change what matters to you. So again, this feels significant and it will be more so if you have planets or points around 18 degrees of Capricorn, but it matters for all of us as we're becoming new bearers of light codes. We're holding new frequencies now. We're able to work with these new frequencies and light codes in new ways, and they're continuing to evolve us and to shift us. So what that means is that after we've cleared out a lot of karma, you've released a lot of intense, heavy energy. This can relate to intense emotional energy or energy in your fear body. This can relate to things that you've worked through, whether that is trauma, abuse, anything harmful and deep. There's an energy that then is released and removed from your energy body and it allows you to then bring in lighter energy and energies that are in better alignment with who you are now as well as where you want to go. And for so many, you've moved through so much karma. You've been doing healing work for years, if not decades. You've moved through lifetimes of things. I mean, this is a big deal. This lifetime is a big deal. And these energies have been so intense. It's almost like we've been required to do this work ready or not. And something that you could relate to is that when you're on a spiritual path, it's like you've been on so many healing cycles and you've worked through so many issues that you could feel like you have a dark night of the soul punch card where you've had nine dark nights of the soul. So the 10th one is free. The 10th one is on the house. It's like you just start to accumulate and understand how these energies move through you, but you also start to understand your own cycles with them, how to approach them, what you need, what matters to you as these big things come up. And then you also know you're going to get through it. You're going to be on the other side of it. It's not going to last forever. You're going to be done at some point and move into new energies. But when you're in it, it's very intense. It can be all encompassing and overwhelming. It can be a lot. So congratulations if you have a dark night of the soul punch card. Perhaps you have multiple punch cards, but the point is you've done a lot of work. And as you've done that work, you've freed yourself, you've liberated yourself, and you've awakened to more of your soul's energies. So it's also important to continually call in the new energies you want to connect with to understand that you're supported in this evolution, that you are evolving into a different version of yourself. And that changes so many things. It changes what you like, what you want, what you want to experience, and it moves you forward into new manifestations. So it's important to acknowledge how far you've come, but it's also important to note that when these energies come through, such as this connection between Venus retrograde and the sun and Capricorn, these are energies that want to support you, that want you to connect with what you desire, what you dream of, what you need, what matters to you, and to be open to that, to really stand in the power of that energy and connect with it because then you'll really feel it and it will be integrated into you even more fully. 
And I actually feel like that is one of the biggest energies over this next week. So keep that in mind that the universe could be showing you more of what you're ready for. And there could be opportunities here to make commitments to yourself, to be energetically aware of what you want to experience next in your life, and to understand that the universe, God, source, spirit, your angels, your guides want to help you create exactly what you need on this planet. So it feels very encouraging overall. Also over this next week, we have some lighter energies moving through as Mercury in Aquarius will make a sextile to Chiron in Aries at eight degrees. This will happen three times because of the Mercury retrograde. And whenever Mercury is making an interaction with that Chiron in Aries, there is the opportunity here to see a healing story in a different way. This is where the wounding, the wounding you've been feeling or carrying might might start to take a different form or shape as Mercury wants us to see it in a new way to perhaps bring in more information or even talk it out to really make sure you're moving energies through you and you're hearing yourself. You're hearing the story, the internal story, perhaps around a wound and Mercury wants you to speak on it or at least to verbalize it or express it in some way where it doesn't stay stuck in the body, in the emotions, or in the head. So this would be a good time to look at anything you've been working through since the middle of 2020 and where you're at with it right now, how you talk about it, how you think about it, and looking at where you can reframe something in a way that is supportive for you. So that Mercury sextiling Chiron in Aries will happen three times, and it's an opportunity to look at what you have considered as very personal and how to detach from it. And that could be something you have to continually repeat and remind yourself, which is often the case when we're rewriting a story. And that energy is exact on January 9th. Then on January 10th, the sun in Capricorn sextiles Neptune in Pisces at 20 degrees. And the next day we have Mars in Sagittarius squaring Neptune in Pisces at 20 degrees. So this is the energy of stepping back and allowing that Neptune in Pisces wants us to be in a place of flow, of ease, of being able to ride the waves. Again, to not take things personally, to look at the bigger spiritual picture. When the sun interacts with Neptune, there can also be something that comes through that just feels good. It feels like a yes. It feels like something that you're wanting to move towards and do something with because that sun in Capricorn likes to understand the purpose. How can this be useful? How can I use this to create something that is needed or valuable? But then when Mars in Sagittarius squares Neptune in Pisces, this can show up or feel like an ego loss where that Mars in Sagittarius is very motivated, fiery, inspired. It can almost be too big for its britches. This could be where you notice you took on too much. You said yes or you committed to too many things and now over the next week you could realize I don't have energy for all this. I don't have time for all this. I thought I could handle it, but I'm being pulled in so many different directions. So that Mars and Sag squaring Neptune and Pisces can show up as a disappointment. Something doesn't come through. There can be a loss. And what's happening is that Neptune and Pisces is removing what you're not able to energetically handle even though the ego says, sure, I can do that. Yes, I can take that on. Yes, that's who I am. So this is an interesting dynamic between that spiritual intuitive side and the egoic desires. So just keep that in mind, especially around January 10th. And January 11th, where there could be something you're ready for, but just make sure you're not going too far too fast. 
that there is a pacing involved and that you're able to see what you can really handle so that you're not in over your head or you don't try to take it too far and then something comes apart or the wheels come off type of thing. Because that Neptune in Pisces will remove and take away anything that's not needed, as well as maintain a certain energetic equilibrium that might not always feel good at a personal level or even to how much you want to accomplish in a day. And so on that note, I want to talk a little bit more about these Pisces energies since we now have Jupiter in Pisces where it will stay until May 10th, 2022. These energies are going to open up and expand those Pisces themes that feel really good. Pisces is the energy of compassion, connection, wanting to feel open and connect to all energies, other energies. And it's a beautiful point of release. There's an energy here where you could feel that you're supported or that there's things showing up for you that you thought would happen on a certain timeline. But Jupiter in Pisces connects us to divine timing and what is outside of our own human perceptions and expectations. So this is where there's an expansion of energies almost in all directions. And you could feel these openings. In fact, I'm getting that strong visual of the crown chakra really blooming, really being opened up to receive new messages, new downloads, new inspirations. You could even have a sense of ease and flow around where you felt mentally blocked. The Pisces energies love to escape, to drift away, to have freedom. They don't want to be held back or held down. There's a need for space. And in that space is where you can also receive. Pisces is quite receptive. It's aware of what's going on, even if you can't put it into words or describe it. It's the energy of really sensing the vibes and sensing what's going on. It's certainly the energy of being empathic and being intuitive, being psychic, tuning in to what is not being said, but feeling it and understanding it at an energetic level. So if you have any planets in Pisces, Jupiter is going to travel through and open them up. And Jupiter is moving quite fast. So note that Jupiter is going to come through and make a conjunction to any of your planets in Pisces and really give them a boost, give them some good news, give them something happy or resourceful, expand them. This can also be something that you feel in your energetic body. You could feel it through an expansion of your spiritual self, your intuitive self. It can also be something that shows up that supports you, gives you that sense of positivity, good news, abundance, all those things that Jupiter often brings forward. Now, Jupiter has not been in Pisces for 12 years, so it's moving through for the first time in 12 years, but it's moving through fast. And that's why you want to track it, because even by the end of January, Jupiter will be at six degrees of Pisces. So you want to track where this Jupiter in Pisces is moving, especially especially if you have planets in Pisces, so that you can see when it will be conjunct your planets and make the most of it. Be open, be ready, say yes, since Jupiter tends to bring in those gifts and those presents that maybe you've been waiting for or you've just been needing. It gives you that good boost. Now, because that Pisces energy is very caring, it's a giver, it wants to support and help, it is important as well to maintain boundaries and to be very clear in what you're doing and where you're saying yes. And it reminds me of a personal story I have to share with you briefly about my first love, my first boyfriend in high school who had moon in Pisces. And I will confess that moon in Pisces is one of my favorite moon signs. I have three favorite moon signs and it's okay to have your favorite moon signs. In fact, you might notice that in your own life, that there have been certain moon signs that have been more important or better connections for you. And I've had multiple people in my life who have moon in Pisces that have been significant to me. So I love moon in Pisces. And one thing that would happen between the dynamic between him and I 
is that he would always find himself in these predicaments where he said yes to something because his moon in Pisces wants to help, wants to support, wants to give, wants to offer. And he would do a lot for his friends. He would overdo it. And we would have this back and forth conversation around where he would say yes, and then he would regret it but he wouldn't know how to back away. And it's because he didn't want to disappoint people. He didn't want to let them down. And so the conversation we'd have is that I would ask him, well, is that really something you want to do or say yes to? And he would say, well, I want to help them and I want to be there for them because I know it's important to them. And I would say, well, it's okay if you're not able to go, if you have another commitment, it's okay if you don't want to. It isn't your responsibility to do everything for everybody. But he could never tell people no, especially in person. Because that moon in Pisces, again, it feels things and it can feel into when you're going to disappoint someone else. It can feel into other people's expectations of you. And so that's what he would always be feeling. He would be sensing how they would be expecting him to help out or to do something or to show up. And then more often than not, he would wish he hadn't or he would realize, I really don't want to do this. So with the Pisces energy, you might want to be aware of this in yourself because of that Jupiter and Pisces coming through that opens us up to wanting to be of service, wanting to support, wanting to help others. But you might want to give yourself time and to make a commitment to yourself that you're not going to make a decision on the spot. And that could just be a really good thing to practice if you're an empath, if you have a lot of water in your chart, or if there's something that you've noticed in yourself where you continually say yes, and then you regret it. So this can also be true to Libra energies or Libra placements. Also the seventh house energies where you want to give yourself time to really consider if it's the right use of your energy for yourself and that you're not responsible for everyone else and you don't have to take care of everyone else. And it's okay if maybe they're disappointed in the moment, but that's theirs to work through. It's not yours. So this is a good thing to be aware of with these Pisces energies coming through because there could be an unconscious lack of boundaries. And so you want to be aware of that in yourself where you want to note, okay, I need time to process a request or I need time to think through something to make sure that I'm saying yes from truly a selfless giving place where I don't have expectations and I'm genuinely happy to show up or to do something for another. Because when you're doing it from that energy, it's a beautiful gift. There's no attachments. There's no strings attached. You're just doing it because you want to to do it. But if you have a habit of continually saying yes without knowing your own energy or knowing your own boundaries, that's where you could find it hard to back out of things or you could regret the commitments you said or agreed to. So there will be new responsibilities around your own energy management with this Jupiter in Pisces. And that is just something to know in terms of how you use that energy. And this was the boyfriend I mentioned a while ago who died unexpectedly a year and a half ago. And it was ruled an accidental death, but it was still tragic. And in fact, he had reached out to me a few months before his death and I hadn't talked to him in like 25 years. So then I had that survivor's guilt to move through where you wonder, could I have said something? Could I have done something? And that's my own Pisces energy that feels that way too. So part of the Pisces theme is that we can feel, did I do enough? Did I say the right thing? And you could swim in some of these energies, but it's very important to then be compassionate and honest with yourself about how when you know you've done all you can do, that's all you can do. And you have to set yourself free. You have to let yourself off the hook because that Pisces energy can also go into the lower expressions of 
feeling like a victim, feeling like you're not enough, feeling like you needed to do more or give more. And this is where we also can go into the understanding of how we hold and carry emotions. So these are going to be some of the energies to be mindful of in your own life, especially if you have Pisces in your chart. But just at a collective level, this would be a wonderful time to look at your own spiritual beliefs and what you practice and go to in order to understand life circumstances. Because we know that every life is temporary. We know that we all are going to pass and we're not going to be here forever. And so it's honoring and knowing the bigger spiritual picture that can give you perspective and grounding. This is where we can understand everyone is a soul. Everyone is on their own on their own soul journey. And that even though, for example, this boyfriend who had an accidental death, we know that on a soul level, it's very intentional. And that can bring you peace, that can help you detach, and that can also release you from any emotional burdens or baggage that you might be carrying. So that is another gift of this Jupiter and Pisces is to look at your own spiritual beliefs and the wisdom that can connect you to greater understandings of energies, of what we go through in a life, of what happens that can seem even cruel and punishing at times. But when you go higher, you'll find peace, you'll find the messages, the answers, the understanding that can comfort our human selves. So this is going to be an opportunity to go higher with Jupiter and Pisces to find parts of your own journey that you're ready to release and have completion around because of your own spiritual wisdom, because of your own spiritual studies or a higher perspective that helps you navigate this very wild human ride. There could be things that you find peace around with Jupiter and Pisces, peace in your heart, peace in your emotions. Maybe there's even something in your fears that no longer seems as big or all-encompassing. This Jupiter and Pisces can help you with that and help you really move through it. So that could be another intention to hold. Even if you don't have any planets or points in Pisces, this is a current cycle to find peace with what is, to let yourself off the hook, to go easy, to know that you've done the best you could based on who you were or what you thought were options, to give yourself something more to work with. Meaning, again, that higher spiritual understanding that gives you some soul peace, And this could be something too that feels really big at a soul level. I also feel like this is going to be a theme when Jupiter and Neptune are conjunct in Pisces at 23 and 24 degrees in April. There could be something that comes up that really brings in a lot of compassion that requires us to really release ourselves from lifetimes of certain cycles, karma, habits, all of that can be let go of. It can dissolve into the ethers and no longer be something that you hold or carry in your energy field. So these Pisces energies are about setting ourselves free from something. And that could be very personal as well. That could be something that you know that perhaps nobody else knows about you, but it's something that you're ready to transmute and release, especially if it's held you back Or if you've had any self-judgment, if there's things you've been judging yourself about, or you've been holding yourself to certain standards, if you've been requiring a lot, if you've been your own worst enemy, these are all themes where you could have a rewriting of that energy, like a rewriting of the script, but also a shift, a significant shift in the energies. So these Pisces themes will be especially big the first half of the year. We will keep talking about them. We'll keep discussing them because they're also showing us more of how we're ready to grow spiritually, energetically, and intuitively. This can be openings into your spiritual senses, into more of your spiritual gifts, your intuitive messages, downloads, all kinds of beautiful things that the Pisces realms will bring in. You could even feel 
more connected to the spiritual realm and you could feel messages from loved ones who have passed over, animals that have passed over. You could feel more connected to what you can't see and you could even have a sense of understanding why certain lives ended when they did or what the soul purpose was. Uh, there's so many things that can come up around this, but again, it can really bring you peace and an understanding of why certain souls leave when they do. So overall, we have a lovely week of focus and prioritizing ahead of us. Also being open to what that Venus star point energy brings in around January 8th and 9th as the sun wants us to receive in our heart space, to receive the value, love, and worthiness from our souls, to connect with higher energy streams that will support us now. So I wish you a beautiful week ahead and thank you so much for joining me as always. I am grateful for your time, energy, and presence. I hope that you have had a beautiful start to 2022. For those of you who have asked, yes, the January 2022 Soul Growth Program is now available. You can get it for 11 bucks with Capricorn as the coupon code, and I'll put that link below. You can find out more about me over at mollymccord.online, and I'll be back here every Monday and Wednesday for a new podcast episode. I'm also releasing new videos for you on Friday on YouTube. Be sure to check those out as I think there's a lot of good information and specialty topics that can help you understand your astrological chart even more. I'll see you back here very soon for another episode. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day ahead. And I hope that this Venus star point really infuses you with higher downloads of love and acceptance. I'll see you back here next Monday. Take good care.